After five rounds of the Gashimov Memorial, the players had a free day and it looked like they needed it. And there was a football match organised, Azerbaijan against the rest of the world, and by all accounts, Magnus Carlsen played a blinder and was on the winning team. Uh, well, he looked much refreshed when it came to round six, and he was playing against the Azerbaijani player, Shahriya Mamadyarov. Um, let's take a look, Mamadyarov with the white pieces. Now, if you recall that in their first game in the tournament, Carlsen defeated him really quite convincingly. But today he has black, and that allowed Mamad Yarov to, well, put more of his imprint on the game, to play the game in his style. And here, with white, he already offers a pawn. So it's a strange kind of mixture between, well, it started out as a Nimzo Indian, now it's a kind of Queen's Gambit, and later on, well, in a couple of moves, it even transposes into a kind of Catalan. So what has White got for the pawn? Well, basically, he manages to control a lot of the centre. Now, Carlsen plays in the most ambitious way, trying to hang on to this pawn. So he does that by supporting his pawn chain like this. Now, White could advance in the centre, but instead Mamadyarov played, well, in this Catalan-style way, developing his bishop to this long diagonal, and that can put additional pressure on Black's queenside pawns. So it's, it's an interesting way that Mamadyarov is playing, very much his style. You know, he's a very aggressive player. He loves attacking. So, OK, the bishop's gone to g2, but now he claims the centre. And, of course, when you have the centre, this gives you the chance to try and strike out, to seize the initiative, to attack. And, you know, there are lots of tactical possibilities here for white. I and mean, you can see the bishop is now on the same line as the queen. There are sometimes tactics on the long diagonal and tactics based on the A-file as well. So this is, it's, an, it's not a simple position for, for both sides, but okay, well he, here's first interesting moment. Uh, Mamadyarov decided to strike out with pawn to d5, but as Carlson pointed out after the game, actually White could have played e4, e, e5 in this position. So the knight obviously comes to knight square on d5, but here's the point. It's a nice tactic. So white strikes on the king side, sacrificing a piece. So now queen takes h6 is threatened. Now the obvious move to protect that pawn is king g7. Everything looks fine, but now we can see that knight takes d5 uncovers a threat here. So, for example, after pawn takes, well, white just recovers the piece and stands better. Um, in fact, there are a few ways out of this. I mean, this end game is actually possible, but you know, maybe white is better there. In this position, it's also possible to exchange off here, and then probably the game will end in a forced draw. Carlson just thought the game would end in a draw, just like this, and now it's perpetual check. Now it's a fairly long line, but actually it's quite forcing. But, well, it didn't occur to Mamadyarov at all. And to be honest, he's not the kind of player that would willingly go in for a kind of drawing variation so early on in the game. Not his style at all. You know, he after the game he said he was very confident in his position. And, you know, I think certainly White has decent compensation here. So, the Queen came back. Uh, after queen c7, well, here that's a bit annoying. So instead, the queen came all the way back to d8, which looks a bit odd to put the queen in the same line as the rook, but seems like he can just about get away with it. Now, Mamadyarov, of course, with this exchange, has succeeded in damaging black's kingside pawns. There's no f pawn, which means the e pawn is sometimes weak, sometimes black's king is a little bit weaker. So white certainly has compensation, and 
although this pawn clump looks quite attractive in the long term, it's actually very difficult to advance it. So for the time being, Carlson has to play very carefully just to try to withstand White's kingside initiative. So first of all, he exchanges off, exchanges off this bishop, which wasn't really doing too much, and then shifts the queen out of the way. Good move, covering g6, stepping out of the pin as well. Now, it looks very attractive to bring the rook to d6. You know, it's a big hole there, but actually after knight e5, that knight is going to land on d3, and that starts to look very attractive for black. So Mamad Yarov played f4 to cover the e5 square. Okay, that looks good, and you know, just generally advancing on the king side. The rook comes in to play rook d8 on the d-file. Good move. And now again, I'd quite like to play rook d6 for white, but knight g4 hitting this is a bit annoying. So Mamad Yarov, understandably, played h3. I think it's a good move. Rook f7 from Carlson. Um, well, we'll we'll see that we'll see the reason for rook f7 in a moment actually. So, finally, the rook comes to d6 and e5. Okay, so now you can see there's a bit of pressure building up on the e4 pawn. So the bishop, knight, and potentially the queen all pressing on that pawn. So sometimes you know black can take here. After the game, both players thought that maybe rook e1 was a good move here, just to hold the tension in the position. So covering this and keeping all white's options open. Um, you know, here, for example, the knight can still enter f5. And this is, this is a very difficult position, I think, for both sides. Instead, Mamad Yarov played f5. OK, I can understand why you know he might want to claim this square or you know claim the g6 square, but actually fixing the structure really helps black. And now we can see one of the reasons for playing knight uh, rook f7 is to play the knight to f8. So it covers these two squares. That's important. Also opens up the d file and you know, allows Black's rook to switch to the d-file. And somehow this, you know, f5 means the, the structure in the middle is completely static. So although it's to some extent it's taken the pressure off because now what Black's queen isn't hitting the e4 pawn, in fact, everything's just a bit more fixed. And this one is a permanent problem for white. Knight f8 was an excellent move. There's only one downside to knight f8. Carlson gave back his extra pawn. But this, well, as we'll see, um, doesn't seem to matter. I mean, maybe instead of taking this, Mamadjarov should have just supported the rook and played this position. This might have been better. But I think, you know, certainly after a move like this, the game is certainly turning in Carlson's favour. So instead, Mamad Yarov took on c5. And after this exchange, rook d7. Basically, black is gaining control over the d5. If the, if the bishop retreats, then queen d8. And you can see black controls the d5 and still pressure on e4. Black is better. Instead, Mamad Yarov took on f8. Now the queen is ready to come to this active square on c5. Mamad Yarov played rook d1, but this is a tough position. If rook e1 sporting this pawn, then simply rook d3 looking across at the king side, but also ready for queen a3, and that's a goner. I think by this stage things have just gone terribly wrong for Mamad Yarov. Rook d1 is a straight blunder, but frankly, I don't think we can really give any sound advice to white in this position. Queen's d5 check happened. King came here, and then 
bishop takes e4, uh, well, forced Mamadyarov's resignation, actually. Um, let's just see what might happen after this. Let's take here, and then we'll take on e4. So now, okay, black is a pawn up, but, you know, this is very weak. Um, queen f2 is happening. White to king is just in a, in a complete mess here. Um, well, it's understandable that uh, Mamadiorov had just had enough in this position. So there we go. Uh, it, back to business for Magnus. And, well, he looked very relaxed after the game. Um, you know, I think there was a lot of talk about, um, you know, the end of the Carlson era after his two losses. <laughs> oh, ridiculous. You know, Sometimes it happens, you have a couple of bad days, but Carlsen is just a class act. And I think this game showed that, um, yeah, one shouldn't write him off just yet. And that victory meant that after six rounds, he regained the lead. So Carlsen and Radyabov now have three and a half out of six. Uh, Caruana, Karyakin, Nakamura uh, have three, and Mamadyarov, poor guy, has two points. So the tournament still absolutely wide open with four rounds to go. Um, anything could happen.